Czeska Vunjavice is a surprisingly charming city which is hidden in the heart of Czech Republic. If you never thought of visiting it or you have no idea about this place, then this video may change your mind. We're gonna explore the best food, drinks, tourist attractions, and also how much things cost. At the end of this video, you're gonna see why it's worth visiting Czeska Vunjavice. Welcome to a new video, guys, and this is the home of the Budweiser, and this is a travel guide about everything which you need to know if you're planning to visit here. Yes, to visit Česká Budějovice, the capital of South Bohemia, you can take a bus or a train from Prague and you're gonna arrive within about two hours. The fare is around 230 crown and from here you can explore other charming towns which are part of the South Bohemia region. For example, Česká Krumlov, Trebon and Tabor. The historic city center is the best place to stay with its beautiful architecture, restaurants, shops and attractions. And you can actually walk here from the main station within 13 minutes. So because right now it's in the morning, it's around 10 o'clock, the first thing we need to get is breakfast. I had quite a few breakfast options to choose from, but I decided to check out the popular Café Detail because it has a top rating and it's in a convenient location right by the square. Upon entering, I noticed that the cafe was small and it gets a lot of traffic and this makes it difficult to find a seat sometimes. However, I was impressed by their design approach which blended a rainforest theme on one side with a coffee themed decor on the other. The look of the cafe was certainly moody and intriguing. After checking out their English menu, which the staff fluently spoke, I decided to go for the pancakes which were served until late afternoon. I also noticed a wide range of snacks and meals available from 450 euro to 8 euro. The coffee arrived quickly and it was creamy, sweet, flat white. It was certainly one of the best coffees I've had. When the pancakes arrived, I was blown away. They were fresh, fluffy, thick. And then there was a warm cranberry sauce with a light mascarpone and some grated ginger on top. The combination of the flavors was unexpected and they were incredibly delicious. I couldn't stop thinking about them for weeks after my visit. The cafe also had a wide range of cakes which were on display and they looked very yummy. I couldn't help notice there was a large number of dog owners coming in every few minutes. So if you are planning to visit, keep in mind that there will be a few dogs in the cafe. That was such a good breakfast. It was delicious pancakes and delicious coffee. It was 89 crown for the coffee and the pancakes themselves were 189 crown. One thing is they don't accept tip by card, which I was intending to do. So make sure when you visit, you come with a tip in coins. So right opposite it, which is right there, this is the square and this is where we're going next. So now we're just getting to the square and whew, wow, guys, let's just appreciate how good looking Cheska Bujopisa is. So far it's delivering. I came here with low expectations but right now it's exceeding it. Check this out. Guys, I kid you not, this place looks incredible. So where I am, it's called the Premisila Otakara, the second square and here it's known for its public buildings all around with the beautiful colors and it's actually one of the larger squares in the whole of Czech Republic. The Premisio Autocar Second Square is a large open space which is equivalent to a football pitch and a half. It's actually named after the founder of the town, King Autocar II, who was the king of the Bohemia in 1265. The square is surrounded by buildings which belonged to wealthy and noble citizens except for the Blue Town Hall. And in the middle, you have this fountain which is the Samson Fountain. you find a stunning Baroque style fountain which is featuring the biblical character Samson who's taming a lion. The fountain was used in the past to bring fresh water from the nearby river into the city square and it symbolizes the city's strength, prosperity and artistic achievements. It's a beautiful and historical landmark that's definitely worth checking out during your visit to Cheska Bujovice. And today happens to be actually a very beautiful day. It's sunny and this calls for some ice cream. So I found a stall right on the square where they are selling traditional Czech ice cream or they call it Smruzlina and I haven't seen this outside of Czech so I think it's probably more of a Czech thing because I always find it in Czech Republic. So we're gonna grab some now. The ice cream is alright priced up to 170 euro and it's a Czech local's favorite. So I recommend that you try it if you never had it before. It's a soft serve ice cream. It's not as heavy as Italian gelato but it's light and soft and creamy. Around the square you also find a lot of cafes with outdoor seatings. Just by the square the other tourist attraction you're gonna find is the Black Tower. Standing tall is 72 meters and also a watchtower which was built in the 1500s for guarding the city. And 
and you can climb up to get some incredible views of the city. So to enter the Black Tower, it costs 60 kron for adults and 30 kron for kids. If you come like I did, this is March. Unfortunately, it's closed because it's open from April to October. However, next to it is the St. Nicholas Cathedral, which is free to enter and it dates back to the 13th century. The cathedral was burned down in its entirety in 1641 and it was rebuilt and gone through many repairs and rebuilding to the Baroque style which you see today. The other interesting stop is three minutes walking distance away and which is the Priory Square. What's interesting here is the Church of the Sacrifice of Virgin Mary and then the Dominican Monastery. I found this square to be cute as you have a couple of cute cafes and then you also have the popular Sonitsa restaurant which is serving Czech cuisine and they also brew their own beer so it's the ultimate combination. Another place which is worth strolling and walking through, this is Panska Street. So this is a tiny little street where you have beautiful colored houses as well. It's like an ongoing theme within Czech Republic of like vibrant colored houses with pink, yellow, any color you can throw out there and green. So this place is so tranquil and so quiet. Maybe because right now it's not the peak of summer, but it's incredible. You can have some nice pictures here. I really like this street. As you wander down this street, Keep an eye out for some galleries that showcase intriguing and unique art pieces. And if you make it to the end of Panska Street, you'll find the Rabenstein Tower, which was once a stronghold for town defenders and it also housed a prison. Unfortunately, the tower's opening hours are a bit peculiar, so I opted to explore the art shop gallery, which is also conveniently located inside the same building. Inside, I discovered a treasure trove of art sculptures, clothes, books, cups, home decorations, and wall paintings and more. And all of this was available to purchase at different price ranges from affordable all the way to the luxurious high costs. And to top it off, they were also exhibiting some work from the sculpture was called Jakub Fleischer, and they were showing both indoors and outside of the garden. And the best part, entry to the gallery was free, which makes it a perfect spot for art lovers and window shoppers alike. Another interesting thing they have in Cheska Vodjavice is the river, and this joins within Cheska Vodjavice with Vautava, which is going all the way to Prague. You can get on a sightseeing river cruise for a small fee, and you can also rent some pedal boats to see some interesting monuments. I did like the view of the other side of the Dominican monastery. It's beautiful, it's like serene, it's quiet, it's chill, and you also have some restaurants where you can sit as you're looking to the river, which is pretty nice. And looking at restaurants, this makes me want some lunch, so now we're gonna go to a popular rated place for Czech food. Guys, our favorite part of the day is here and in this trip we're going for the best of the best restaurants. So for lunch we are going to Masni Krami which used to be a meat market with a history dating back over 650 years. The restaurant itself has been open for 60 years. It has been renovated and has been brought back to life to the restaurant which you see today. It's run by the Budvar Brewery and they're exclusively serving the Budvar beer. So there's no better place to go for some traditional Czech food and a refreshing drink. They have a daily menu going on for cheaper meal and some small beer snacks going out through the week and then they also have a bigger menu where you're gonna find the popular Czech dishes. So what I went for here is a Czech traditional classic dish and it's called Svichkova which is basically a beef steak with bits of pork in the middle and then you have some dumpling and it's in some root vegetable sauce which is with cream and on top you have also some cranberry sauce. So now let's dig into the first bite. Tasty. Mm. I find Svichkova to be the only Czech dish which is the full test palate. This is very really delicious. And once you eat the meat, you top it off with your beer. So cheers. So just left and the price was 249 for the meal and 56 crown for the beer without alcohol. They all cost the same. It was a very good experience, very good restaurant and good food and the staff was super friendly. And one thing I noticed about Cheska Buja is the people are generally so friendly. It's something which I didn't also expect because people just come and greet you and wave at you. They are really friendly here. So now we've tasted the beer now let's find out how it's made so i left the center on a quest to find the origin of the budweiser beer also known as the beer of kings so to get here to the brewery it's about five to ten minutes and i suggest you take a taxi service like boat or you can walk from the center but it's like 45 minutes of walking which is a bit much and you have the main building here of the brewery and then on the other side here you have the entrance which is for visitors where you can go in and you can buy a ticket the waiting hall was like a mini paradise there's a bar which says you fresh beer straight from the sauce, a souvenir shop, and a prayer which I've seen in Czech pubs and also some restaurants, which I never understood until now. 
and once you are buying your tickets remember that there's only one tour in each language so you have Czech language at 2 o'clock you have German at 2.20 and at 2.40 you have English language so I'm going for the 2.40 tour and I bought my ticket it was 220 crown so now let's go in and enjoy the tour so we met our tour guide who was doing this for the first time ever and we suited up in the high vis jackets what's special about the Chesky Budva is that they use artisan water which is sourced right under the brewery and then next up was the malt and sugar extraction room this room is quite warm I would say about 30 degrees and then there's a strong malty smell so here they heat up the malt to a certain temperature for the sugar to come out and then they filter it from there we move to the area where they add the yeast and then the part where they do the fermentation process which is different periods for different types of beers and then we came to the maturing area so here we got to see the old way of maturing using wooden barrels and then there's the newer way which is using the metallic tanks and in here it's quite cold the temperature is about 5 to 10 degrees in the atmosphere so here was the highlight and here is where we got to test the fresh unpasteurized beer straight from the tanks it doesn't get any more fresher than that and each person got their own beer glass for testing finally we stopped on the bottling facility here's where all the beers are borrowed labeled capped and are sent out for sale unfortunately because i was here on a saturday it wasn't in operation but nevertheless it was an experience i'll never forget it was generally a nice tour and the guy was very very friendly very lovely and he really knew a lot then I ended up going to the shop I grabbed a few things I bought like a t-shirt and then I also got a few glasses for drinking and the price was great the t-shirt was 220 crown and the glasses were 70 and 80 crown so I wanted a coffee break so I decided to go to Paluba cafe and restaurant which is located right on top of the water in the town center here they had some delicious looking food and the smell in the air was just incredible and then they also had quite a good drinks menu you will be tempted to try some of their stuff the cafe's interior is is colorful and vibrant it's sort of like reminiscent of the trendy Camden district in London and then there's some seats outside which are facing the water which provide a picturesque view while you're sipping your drink if you have some extra time I highly recommend that you visit the Luboka fairy tale castle it's a free entry castle just short of 20 minutes drive or a boat takes it away from the main square normally people come through Cheske Vujo visa as they're making their way to Cheske Krumlov now get ready to be amazed by the medieval Czech town of Cheske Krumlov now watch this travel guide for some important tips which you need to know to make your trip unforgettable 